there is a strange dichotomy I've noticed between the politics of infrastructure development and uh, gentrification. Gentrification, as you know, is where uh, situations or scenarios are crafted by the powers that be to keep an area in a certain level, a certain class uh, or a certain state so that they can come later and uh, occupy it within their terms and then build it. Uh, we can see it happening in places like Isili, uh, in other places, you know, in Kilimani. Those used to be nice government estates and owned buildings, and then they are bought, and then suddenly it's a concrete jungle. So I think it's very deliberate, very premeditated. Uh, people, and especially those who have uh, access to the planning documents, the planning blueprints, they are able to influence how development will be shaped, considering uh, you know, if you look at places like Karen, look at places like Runda, look at places like Muthaiga, they've been tarmacked with the same taxpayer money that should be tarmacking other places, including, uh, you know, the Eastern Bypass side or what, uh, places like Rongai, places like Ngong, places which have never seen tarmac all their lives, have uh, have been denied deliberately by our roads agency, our planners, our cabinet secretaries, because they are hopelessly and irredeemably corrupt, and we save fish rods from the head. So William Bruto is corrupt. It's uh, the corruption spreads downstream. Uh, downstream. So I was uh, drawing parallels between how uh, development is moving and what I'm seeing. Of late, I'm seeing a lot of. Uh, Chains. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a lot of franchises and while it is a measure of uh, success when you see one franchise. Uh, don't forget we keep saying that uh, a company like, uh, uh, by the way I'm not in the business of hating, I'm not hating, but there are companies here who we call Kenyan and they're not even Kenyan owned but just because they were set up in Kenya then oh we say blah blah blah. So I have I have noticed uh, these big uh, brands, these big franchises are spreading to areas hitherto uh, uh, unreachable, hitherto uh, unknown to them. And so I'm wondering what is happening. Uh, what is happening is a distribution of wealth where money is moving from uh, many hands into few hands, into conglomerates. These conglomerates, I told you, they can go and negotiate taxes, uh, favorable tax uh, regime. They can negotiate favorable power agreements with KPLC. Uh, the, the small players are left to the dogs because they cannot be able to compete with these guys who are giving better margins uh, they have, and 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 I can see it and I'm wondering where did we lose the plot uh, I was drawing parallels between the uh, construction of uh, Thika Superhighway for instance and uh, the eastern bypass the eastern bypass is where you have Kamakis and whatnot so we have seen a massive explosion of uh, business in eastern bypass within the last 10 years or 15 years uh, we've seen so many places, so many guys selling boozy, selling what, and then it has grown. Even small hotels have now become buildings, they've become huge enterprises uh, because of the Eastern Bypass. So why? Why is a small offshoot of a super highway becoming more prosperous, having more money in circulation than, you know, a town that has been in existence for long, like, like, like Thika? Uh, it all boils down to the infrastructure. Uh, for the longest, uh, the Eastern Bypass only had one lane, and everyone saw that one lane as a as a bottleneck, as a, you know, as something, as a disruption, but it could have been the hidden strength to uh, the hidden cause of the explosion of business within that region. So you have one lane, what you do is you can be able to, uh, to, to attract clientele driving on both sides because there's no hindrance in between. So people going to the side of the airport and people leaving the airport, each can each can get into any kind of bus uh, whatever business they can patronize any business they can do any sort of whatever without any hindrance because there is no logistical barrier there is no uh, there is no there is nothing blocking them but now that it has been dual you are going to notice that the eastern bypass things will start going because our logistical planners they are very stupid the engineers that we have the planners that we have they are stupid they are dumb beyond measure what they do is they make it difficult they make it extremely difficult for us to use the very roads. You saw them with no shame trying to tell us to pay toll stations. We were going to ban uh, Kenha and Kura and Kera offices. We were going to ban you people. We were going to ban your vehicles. I'll come up with such a delusional uh, agenda again and then we'll show you what uh, that we mean business. But what I'm saying is that they now that they've built, they've dualed it, uh, what, what we are seeing is now by the time you're moving from point A and you want to go just to the opposite side of the road, you have to drive one kilometer, two kilometers, ten kilometers to get to a U-turn because these guys have created all these barriers which don't make sense. First of all, they are a hazard. They cause so many accidents. But the, it is all 
premeditated. This is not by coincidence. So that uh, shortly all the small businesses that will have thrived and flourished in that business will move and suddenly we are going to have the big brands that you're seeing. I don't want to mention them because I don't want to be associated with hate. Uh, you, you want to call me uh, to say that I'm hating, but I'm just it's just an observation and I saw it with Thicker Superhighway. Back when Thicker Superhighway was just a tool, uh, a dual carriage, and it was very easy to do the U-turns, to turn everything. It was so convenient. There was businesses across the road. I know there is a place near Kenyatta Road uh, where we, we would always stop to buy Mbuzi and whatnot. And ever since the Superhighway was built, then all these businesses collapsed because the planners did not even factor in as many exits. So the exits which are now being done on super on thicker super highway are for politically connected big businesses. For instance, if if you open a mall on uh, thicker super highway, you're going to be built for uh, an exit. If you do what, you're going to be built for an exit. The petrol stations, the ones which are politically connected, do, and so the businesses that are thriving on thicker super highway are those big companies. They are big petrol stations which have uh, very expensive uh, tax shops, very expensive uh, shops or supermarkets or mini mini markets. So this is all deliberate. They, they, they block access to uh, access to a certain area so that now you create the opportunity for some people. And this is the height of intellectual anemia. This is the height of stupidity. You saw somebody being killed by, uh, by, by the barons of the Kenya Kusha shit show. Because of what? Because of denying them a tender. But that, that shows how stupid you are. You cannot create your own wealth. You're only looking at government because of that entitlement. You're so entitled to other people's money, to our money as our government, that you want to kill somebody because you've been denied a tender. That is the height of stupidity. And that is uh, what Kenya Kusha has bred. Because I told you again, fish rots from the head. This guy on the top, William Bruto, has shown them this government is just for stealing. So you steal as long as you give me mine. And it has become a pattern. Guys are becoming greedier. Guys are becoming more narcissistic. Why? Instead of creating a conducive environment for everyone to thrive, you want just to be the only one thriving alone. How stupid can you be? And that's why we had this Manda Mano. Uh, thicker super highway now, we are seeing uh, the extinction of small businesses and now we are seeing the big brands now setting up and everything. And so we are asking, uh, it cannot be a coincidence. I'll give you another example of Thicker Town. The Thicker Town people, I keep telling them, stop voting, stop being misled to vote by uh, gospel musicians, by Kameme and Inoro. Stop. You, you have to think rationally. So when Kabogo was governor, he built the main entrance to Thicker and there was a supermarket there, there was Tuskies, there was a hotel, there was everything else. And all the businesses in that lane died because of what? Because they erected an unnecessary wall, making it difficult. So uh, Thicker Town over the weekends when people were traveling to Sagana, they were, they were going to Moranga or other places, they would stop to Thicker Town, they shop at that task. But now this governor called Kapogo, together with his stupid and illiterate MCAs, they, then they built that road. And that road has never been attempted to be completed. So they, And then they erected that wall. So people, when they are driving into Thicker Town, they, they would easily take a corner and get into the business that they want. Uh, they get into the hotel, they get into the world. So the businesses along that corridor, all of them collapse because of what? Because now for you to get into the other side, which is just a few meters, you have to go drive down and then come up into traffic. And the construction of that, uh, that, that wall, that separation was just a misplaced and misguided undertaking because of what? Because your planners do things deliberately to destroy, not to build. When they are sitting down in, uh, in governments, they are thinking of bureaucracy, they are thinking of uh, interventions that are going to make it difficult. You think of KRA, you think of all these idiots who are being paid with our taxpayers' money and they need to know. They need to know that we are, we, we, there might have been a semblance of peace, a semblance of tranquility, but don't be misled. Don't be fooled. We are still connecting things. We know where everything went wrong and we are just giving you, uh, we are just watching you and giving you warnings so that you don't revert back to your uh, stupidity, your culture of stupidity and nonsensical uh, undertakings. Please, um, <laughs> government bureaucrats, especially you, because the institutional memory is the same the politicians may change, but the institutional memory is the same. It's the bureaucrats. We are talking about the planners, the roads engineers. We, what we are doing is we are telling you create enough exits, make it convenient for businesses to set up. We don't want it. We don't want the environment to be only conducive for big business, for big conglomerates, for big franchises. Everyone deserves a chance. And this is a warning to the planners. Get your act together. Period.